Hey guys, this is Coop from Garage Gym Reviews, and today we are reviewing the most underrated Rogue Fitness barbell in existence. There are a lot of Rogue Fitness barbells. In fact, if you'd like to see my opinions on every single Rogue Fitness barbell that's in existence, you can click the link below the like button because I have a written review on every single barbell, not lying. In my quest to own every single Rogue Fitness barbell and every single barbell in existence, sorry wifey, I am doing reviews on everything I can get. So this one recently came in stock. I decided to pick it up. One, because I've used the previous versions and I really like them. Two, because I think this may be the most underrated barbell that Rogue Fitness makes, which may make it the most underrated barbell in existence of barbells. And three, because I really like Matt Chan and so I wanted to review it. Because Matt Chan is a garage gym owner, Matt Chan is really cool and uh, it's a sweet barbell. Let's get into it. Okay, first off, this barbell, when I say it's unique, it's got some very unique features. The make of it is similar to a Rogue Ohio bar or a Rogue 2.0 bar, a typical CrossFit bar, but it's had basically more changes and specifications added to it from Matt Chan and some of the designers at Rogue to make it unlike any other bar that's in Rogue's lineup. Let's get into some of the basic specs. As with all Rogue Fitness products, this is made in the USA. It's a multi-purpose bar, meaning it's made for CrossFit, general training, things like that. It's 20 kilograms, so it's right around 45 pounds, but you know, you can just consider it 45 pounds. 28 and a half millimeter diameter, which is what pretty much every CrossFit bar that's out there. It's got multiple neural marks, specifically for IPF and IWF standard, and it comes in different coatings. This one specifically is Cerakote over stainless steel. Why you'd want that? I don't know. And then it's 200K PS PSI tensile strength, which means you're never gonna be able to break it. Okay, first off, let's talk about the shaft because we like talking about shafts here. Who is a man that would risk his neck for his brother man? This shaft is 28 and a half millimeters, as I said in the kind of the specs layout. 28 and a half millimeter is kind of the gold standard for a general training bar. Sure, there are powerlifting bars like the Texas Power Bar that is 28 and a half millimeter, but in my opinion, a power bar is 29 millimeters. An Olympic weightlifting bar is 28 millimeters, unless it's a women's bar at 25 millimeters. And then a general purpose CrossFit type barbell is great at 28 and a half millimeters. The reason that diameter is great despite it just being a half millimeter difference from an Olympic bar and a powerlifting bar is because it just works for both sides of those. So a 29 millimeter bar sometimes it feels a little bit thick when you're doing cleaning jerks and snatches and especially if you're doing the high rep stuff and then 28 millimeter can feel a little bit thin when you're like put it on your back for back squats or pressing. It just feels a little bit less comfortable. So I like 28 and a half millimeter and I think 28 and a half millimeter is kind of the ideal for most of you that are just looking for like one barbell, which <laughs> let's be honest, you're never just gonna have one barbell. Okay, the shaft being 28 millimeters, it is a stainless steel shaft. This option only comes in stainless steel, which I like and I don't like. The reason I don't like it is because it used to come in just a general bright zinc or black zinc option and it was much cheaper, but because this is, they've like basically made all the componentry nicer, a higher level, it's now more expensive, which means I think fewer people will be able to experience the goodness of the Chan bar. However, you know, I like stainless steel and I think it's the best option. But it's not just stainless steel because it's not enough to just have a stainless steel bar. No, you must coat the most corrosion resistant material in existence for barbells that I'm aware of that is affordable with another corrosion resistance coating, which is Cerakote on top of stainless steel. Why you would do that? I really don't know. However, they decided to do it. One, because it looks cool and two, because you know, you never want your barbell to experience any rust ever, and this is a bar that's pretty numb, I'm just not gonna do it. So if you're in a garage gym and you're dealing with fluctuating temperatures and atmospheres, like I am here in this beautiful garage gym, then a Cerakote or a stainless steel barbell is going to work very well, and this one in particular is really designed you know, to be last you to the end of time. Now, on that note of Cerakote over stainless steel, 
I personally think it's excessive. And so the kind of issue here is they went Cerakote over the stainless steel except for this center. But the w reason they didn't go over the center is probably twofold. One is because this center neural on here is different from the outer neural. This center neural is a more passive neural than what's the done on the outer neural. That is a very well thought out spec. And the reason that's well thought out is because if you're doing any sort of like front rack work, front squats or cleans, things like that, then having a center neural that's aggressive absolutely sucks because it just tears up your chin. However, not having a center neural on your back for back squats is not ideal either. So it's just some enough of a neural there that there's something, some sort of tackiness. But if they went Cerakote over the top of that, I think there'd pretty much be nothing there and it'd kind of just be purposeless. However, they left the Cerakote on this outer neural. And this is kind of like a bone I have to pick with this bar is I don't know why they put Cerakote over the outer neural of the bar. I, do, I don't get it, okay? Because here's the idea behind the Matt Chan bar is the outer neural is more aggressive than an Ohio bar, which is a little bit more of a passive neural, but it's less aggressive than an Ohio power bar. But then what they did was they took it and put Cerakote over it, making it, you know, it's still maybe, it's still more aggressive than an Ohio bar, but it's not to the level that I think it should be or could be with stainless steel. The reason you put a coating over it is to protect it. The reason you use stainless steel is because you don't need it protected. So putting it over here, it just doesn't make sense. I'm confused on it. I wish they wouldn't have done it. This is what I wish they would have done. The reason they went with the black and the stainless steel is because it looks extra cool. I totally get it. I like cool things. I like cool barbells. However, I wish they would have just left it to these sections right here. In fact, Rogue has a bar that does exactly this. That's an Olympic weightlifting bar. If they just took these sections, Cerakoted them, they'd still have the cool look that's allowed here, but they'd allow the sections that where the hands and where all the wear comes and where the corrosion would be at, like it would just be stainless steel and you'd have a bare steel feel here, which would make the knurling exactly as the neural scientists at Rogue designed it to be. So kind of my bone to pick there. However, like I still like it in this format. I really just wish they would have just left it off there. Now, the knurling on this, like I said, is a more aggressive knurl than an Ohio bar. I don't think it's so aggressive that it's gonna feel uncomfortable if you're doing higher rep stuff for CrossFit. So if you're doing high rep cleans, something like a Grace or a Jackie, one of those workouts, I don't think it's gonna like, you know, impair your movement much with that. I prefer a more aggressive knurl. I'm really glad they did a more aggressive knurl because oftentimes with the Ohio bar or Rogue 2.0 bar, I think it feels a little bit too passive. Unless you're using chalk and then it feels a little bit okay, but if you're not using any chalk, it's just like, ah, there's just not enough there. And then over time, it ends up wearing down and being even less aggressive. One of the other unique features to the shaft here is where they place the starting points for the neural. Again, like I said, this is a very like specific bar and it's got some unique features that like Matt Chan has actually thought through from somebody who actually trains quite a bit. And so what they did was they moved the starting point for the neural out so that rather than like scraping your shins every time you deadlift or scraping your shins every time you're doing cleans, you now have a smooth part that's in contact with your shin. That's a, like a, that's a pretty smart feature and something that most bars don't get. The other benefit to that is because when most people are getting on the bar to do cleans or something like that, they're setting up their thumbs off the edge of the start of the neural. So they're going like this and then they're going like this, then they're gripping. Well, because this is already set up outside, Basically what Matt Chan had said years ago, I don't know if this is still the case, but this is where his starting point was for cleans from the beginning. So rather than have to take the extra time to set up like this and like this and then come down, he can just grab it where it is and go. And this same setting is where I think most people are because Matt Chan is like, you know, I mean, he's strong and everything, but he's an average size male. He's not massive. So this sort of like width on the bar is going to work for most people. And it turns out it works well for me. So I might as well be as strong and big as a CrossFit Games champion like Matt Chan.
Okay, the other feature on this that is the most obvious and is very cool, I really like this part, is the Matt Chan like logo uh, with the sweet samurai headdress. That thing is just BA, I'd love a t-shirt with that on it. If I got it, I'd wear it. Rogue, if you're watching this, send me one. Then we got this right here, which is a Rogue logo. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. I don't, you know, I'm not somebody that absolutely loves logos all over everything. Sometimes it's a little too Gucci. However, this one is very similar to a laser cut logo you'd see on like an Arch logo. And you pay extra for a Rogue product, similar you pay extra for a higher end car. So sometimes it's nice to show off. And I think that looks pretty cool with the stainless steel underneath, the Cerakote over top. I think it's nice. Then moving on to the rotation system, similar to other Ohio bars that are out there, it's using a composite bushing. This is not a bronze bushing. Personally, I think for longevity, just because I've seen what's been proven, I prefer a self-oiling bronze bushing. I, I don't necessarily have any specific instances where I have seen that composite is worse. It's just I have more experience with bronze and they've been out longer. However, I'd love to see some sort of thing done in a lab testing composite versus bronze. Um, I have noticed in my bronze bushing bars, they take oiling less often, whereas the composite bushings, if I don't oil them and make sure they're turning, they can sometimes, they don't lock up, but they just get slower and they need a little bit more love. So one instance on that. And then I went with the chrome sleeve option. They offer this in the Cerakote sleeve option. Let me tell you this from somebody with experience with a lot of sleeves, okay? A Cerakote sleeve option is not ideal because as soon as you place one plate on there, it's going to mar and scar the end of the sleeve, okay? So you go with a black sleeve, it's like, oh yeah, it looks cool, out of the box. And then you start using it and you're like, oh, they scratched, it doesn't look as good. That's why you should just go with a standard chrome option. It looks cool because it contrasts with the center knurl here and then like, I don't know. I just, I, I don't like a black Cerakote sleeve. I'm guessing they sell that because people like it, not because it performs better. And then on the end cap, it's a cool end cap. This is my thing with Rogue bars. This one has one of the coolest Rogue end caps that are out there. However, just like with all Rogue end caps, they're just using, it's just a film that's over the top or a sticker of some sort, it ends up scratching, ends up not looking good. In my opinion, that is the one part of the bar that you can really brand and make look really good. It's got the sick headdress logo on there. I wish they would make it in some like 3D pad. I, I don't know, there's just more that could be done with end caps in general. And I think Rogue could kind of lead that charge because once Rogue does something, oftentimes people copy. Would love to see something like that done on the end caps, but that's kind of semantics. Okay, so this bar comes in at 395 bucks with like 15 bucks shipped to your door. I do think that this is a tremendous deal. Tremendous, 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 tremendous. I don't think it's a better deal than like an Ohio bar. If you're just looking for just the best value bar that's out there, this isn't the option I'd suggest. However, I think for those guys that, you know, you want a little bit more aggressive neural on the outside, but you are using it for power cleans and things like that, and would like a center neural, this is really one of my favorite all time bars that Rogue Fitness makes. I think this is one of the coolest bars that is in existence. Um, I like it a lot. Do I, would I recommend it for most people? Probably not because it's just kind of unique and got a lot of nuances. But for those of you that like nice things like I do, um, I think you'll recognize there's something special about this bar. It's really cool. And I like to support things that Matt Chan does because he's a cool guy. So I would suggest this bar under only those conditions. Now, before we go, are there any other specific Rogue bars or just bars in general you'd like to see reviews on? I have quite a few behind me, as you can see. Many of those we haven't even re reviewed yet, and some of those are very expensive. Another bar that's up there that I'd like to review is the Puros bar, which is right here. Another bar that is very special, very unique, and relates to a, an athlete that was kind of a hero of mine uh, back in the day when I used to do Olympic weightlifting stuff. So let us know in the comments about that. This is the Rogue Matt Chan bar. This is the review. Thanks for watching. This is Coop. See you next time. Peace.